I was always raised with the dictum that we can't move forward if we don't understand the past. I see film history as areas where we can really learn not just from the negative examples, but also recognize that we stand on the shoulders of giants. I'm Jacqueline Stewart, and I'm a film scholar, archivist, and curator. Film is a cultural institution. It's a business. It's an art form, and film scholars explore all of these areas. My book, Migrating to the Movies, looks at this history of early African-American filmmaking. And there are a number of early Black artistic pioneers in this field. I wanted to think about how cinema engaged with questions of race and racial identity. There was a kind of mutual relationship that I think had been underexplored. The ways that Blackness influenced the development of cinema as a medium, and the way that cinema played an important role in the development of Black identity in the first part of the 20th century. And I was also looking at how it is that the movies were really struggling with blackness as a visual sign. And you can see across films that are made from the late 19th century and through the first couple of decades of the 20th century, that white filmmakers are really trying to figure out how to pin black people down. You get this creation of stereotypes that we still see remnants of today. So it's just an essential moment to explore how it is that film shaped race and how race shaped films. The Southside Home Movie Project is an effort to collect and preserve and to research, and I think most importantly, to share films that have been shot by residents of Chicago's Southside. It's really important to have these local or regional initiatives around film preservation because this is a way that we can really begin to collect and to study vast quantities of film and to tap the knowledge that people have who are still in those communities. As a body of archival material, it certainly speaks against the relentlessly negative ways that the South Side of Chicago is represented in mainstream media. When we show these films to people who are not in the films, they still smile when they see babies toddling and at the recollections of the lives that they live, the moments they spend at these beaches and parks. So it activates a kind of community memory. I'm really honored to be the host of Silent Sunday Nights on Turner Classic Movies, recognizing how silent films really function as the blueprint for all of the filmmaking practices that have come after. I'm now working as Chief Artistic and Programming Officer at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. This is the largest institution of its kind. It's a thrilling opportunity for me as a film historian because it puts all the things that I've been studying in a physical space, in a public space. I love the way that this museum puts the stories of familiar, iconic films and filmmakers next to those that have not been represented as fully. As a mass entertainment, we have to really understand how it is that cinema appealed to people, how it developed, how it has shaped people's senses of self, histories of stereotypes, setting a lot of norms about gender identities. Cinema's influence on these kinds of questions and issues is undeniable. 